Hey, Julian Kraus here, and this is the DBX286S microphone preamp and processor. Let's have a closer look at how that thing really performs. As always, I will start out with the build quality and the outside of the device, and then dive deeper into the functionality of the DBX286S. And of course, I did some measurements of this device, and I will share the results with you. The first thing you'll notice is that the 286 is pretty big, and that's because it is normally mounted in a rack. Just for comparison, here is a Focusrite 286 audio interface on top of the 286S. The whole housing is made out of metal, and because of that, the device comes in at about 4.5 pounds or 2 kilograms. And on the front, you have 10 knobs to control the features of the DBX286S. The knobs are rubberized and feel pretty sturdy. All the 10 knobs are stepped, and this lets you easily reproduce all the settings. On the back you'll find an XLR input to connect your mic to, a balanced TRS line level input, a TRS insert connector, which lets you insert effects between the preamp and the effect section of the 286S, and lastly a TRS balanced output, where you can hook up for example an audio interface to record the audio. By the way, all the connectors seem to be pretty sturdy and the XLR input is even a genuine Neutrik connector. So overall I'm pretty pleased with the build quality of the 286S, especially considering its cheap price. Let's dive a little deeper into the features of the 286S and start with the preamp section. Here you do have a knob which controls the gain of the preamp. For both the line and microphone inputs it provides a gain range of 60 decibels. Of course, the most important question is how much noise does the microphone preamp has? Well, I measured the equivalent input noise of the preamp and it comes out to be at minus 128.7 dBU. This means that the DBX286S uses a very low noise preamp. This also means that you do not need a fat lifter or cloud head. The built-in preamp of the 286S enables you to record with even low sensitive microphones and you will get a low noise floor. If you want to know how it compares to the preamp performance of some audio interfaces, well, here you go. The DBX286S slots in between the Behringer UMC202HD and the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Granted, they all have a very low noise floor and in practice there won't be any audible difference in noise between them. Have a listen. By the way, the 286S lets you bypass all the effects with the bypass button on the front. This way you only use the preamp section of the 286S and the audio signal is not routed through the effects section. Naturally I checked if the noise floor gets any worse when the bypass is deactivated and the individual effects turned to the off position. And this didn't make any difference, so it's nice to see that the effect section does not introduce any additional noise. Now the next thing I had a look at is frequency response. DBX states that this should be plus or minus 0.5 dB from 20 to 20 kHz. And that's absolutely true. The response is flat and only dropping off by about 1 dB at 10 Hz on the low side and 70 kHz on the high side. This is with the bypass enabled. Then I disabled the bypass and measured the frequency response again. So this time the audio signal is going through the effect section as well, but all the effects are turned off individually. The frequency response changes slightly and drops off a bit quicker in the higher frequencies. Keep in mind this drop off is in an area which is way beyond the audible range for humans. And in the important part, the 20 to 20k range, it is still perfectly flat. So all good. Also in the preamp section you have a button which toggles the phantom power to the mic input and you also got a button that activates an 80Hz high pass filter. The high pass filter is a third order filter which is pretty steep and I quite like this implementation because it is really effective at eliminating low frequency rumble. Now let's have a closer look at the compressor section. Here you can find two knobs, one is called drive and one density. From these names it's not completely clear what they are doing, but from my testing I can tell that the drive knob controls the threshold of the compressor and apparently has some kind of makeup gain integrated to it, 
and the density knob controls the release time of the compressor. The attack time and the compression ratio are not adjustable and they behave depending on the audio signal that goes into the compressor. Even though there are a few settings you cannot change, I think this compressor does its job quite well. And it's a good fit especially for voice recordings. And you're actually listening to the sound of the DBX-286S right now. And the compressor is compressing this audio just slightly. This helps me to tame some spikes in my audio. I also like the gain reduction meter in the compressor section, which makes dialing in the threshold and release time very easy. Next up is the de -esser. Again, you have two knobs to control this effect. The threshold knob is pretty much self-explanatory. It controls the threshold at which the de kicks in. And the frequency knob lets you select the frequency range, which the de will use to trigger. The frequency knob actually only adjusts the trigger range. So if a signal goes above the threshold in the trigger range, the de activates and pulls down the whole frequency spectrum. I don't think that is problematic per se, but I also think that it would be nice if the de would only pull down the high frequencies and leave the rest of the frequency spectrum untouched. Don't get me wrong here, the de works and it does exactly what it's supposed to do. I just think that there is room for improvement here. What I do like again are the two LEDs and they show you by how much the de attenuates the signal when the threshold is exceeded. And this makes it pretty easy to dial in the threshold. The 286S also sports an enhancer with two knobs, one LF and one HF detail. Once again, I think these functions could have been labeled a bit differently. The enhancer is simply an equalizer and the HF detail knob controls a high shelf filter. And by the way, you're listening to this effect right now. When I tested the HF detail, I turned it up all the way and then measured the frequency response of the 286S. And here you can clearly see the effect of the high shelf filter. DBX states that this filter does not have a fixed boost, but actually changes depending on your audio signal. Regardless, the HF detail boosts the high frequencies in your audio signal, and this way you can add a little presence or clarity if you like. The LF detail is also very interesting. Turned up all the way, it gives you a boost around 80 Hz and at the same time a dip around 250 Hz. The 250 Hz dip supposedly makes your voice less boxy sounding and the boost at 80 Hz provides some low end and warmth to your audio. And as you may have guessed, you are listening to this effect right now. Overall, I think the high shelf filter and the low frequency EQ work fine and once you know what they do, you can use them to your advantage. The second last section of the 286S is dedicated to an expander slash gate. Here you can control the threshold and the ratio individually. The attack and release time are not controllable by the user, but I think they are pretty good out of the box and tailored to work nicely with dialog. So this section provides a pretty nice noise gate and personally I really like that you can change its ratio. If you choose something like 2 to 1, your signal does not completely cut off once it drops below the threshold, but it is merely reduced to half its amplitude. And this makes this gate very unobtrusive. Once again, you can find two LEDs which let you know when the gate is active or not. And this lets you easily set up the gate. And the last knob on the 286S is used to control the amplitude of the output of this device. This makes the 286S compatible with all kinds of audio hardware and ensures that whatever comes behind this device gets fed the right amount of signal. And you even got a separate clipping indicator at the output, which is also nice to see. To wrap this up, let's start out with the one thing that I didn't like about the DBX 286S and it has actually nothing to do with the audio, but its size. I know, I know, this thing is designed to be mounted in a rack but so many people use the 286S as a standalone unit and this thing really takes up a lot of space. Now onto the stuff that I liked. The preamp in the 286S is very low noise and has a decent amount of gain. The effects on the DBX are really useful and they are very typical effects you would put on your audio when post-processing a voice recording. And even though some settings of the effects are not user adjustable, I think DBX chose very sensible values for the non-adjustable settings. 
Now let me address the big question in the room. Do you need a DBX286S? Because let's face it, all the effects of the 286S could be done in post-processing. Well, there are already two scenarios which come to mind where you could benefit from a mic preamp and effects combination. For example, if you're live streaming. In this situation, you could benefit from the real-time audio processing of this device. Or let's say you regularly record audio for maybe a podcast. Then the 286S might save you some time in post because the recorded audio is already processed and ready to be used. And I guess there will be more scenarios which I just didn't think of. So can I recommend the DBX286S? Well, if you know that you will benefit from the real-time processing capabilities of this device, then yes, I absolutely recommend it. It's nicely built, the effects are solid, and the overall audio quality is very good. Okay, that's it for now. If you want to see more audio equipment reviews, subscribe to my channel and please give me a thumbs up. I will see you all in the next one.